Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video, we're talking bike racks. I'm gonna tell you what bike rack I picked and why. But first, let me go ahead and remove this rack just so I can show you uh, what specifically my personal challenges were and how I overcame them. So I've been trying to exercise more and part of that is getting back out on the bike. It's been a long time since I've consistently ridden. As a matter of fact, I just sold my road bike because I really didn't enjoy it that much and I went back to a mountain bike. And so with that, I also wanted a way to carry the bike around so that I can, you know, maybe sneak off uh, after work and go ride or go to the local trail system or what have you. So being able to carry the bike on the Jeep is important to me. Unfortunately, you can see this isn't your normal stock Jeep. So uh, a lot of challenges came with some of the modifications I've done. In particular, I have this bumper, which is an Excessive Industries uh, NBO bumper. I had to cut part of the frame, get that raised up nice and high. And one thing you'll notice here is that the receiver for the trailer hitch is pushed up inside the bumper. So it's not hanging down below as most bumpers have them. As a matter of fact, my son's Jeep over there, we'll look at that a little bit later, has a more traditional style receiver hitch. So I have a higher receiver. That's the first thing, it gives me more ground clearance, uh, but presents a challenge when I have this big 37 inch tire on an external body mounted tire carrier. The problem with that is the tire sits down all the way almost exactly on top of the receiver. Let me show you this. So you can see there that the receiver, and I actually have the adapter in there because once I got it installed, uh, I was gonna leave it. So I'll show you what it is, but, um, but I'm not gonna remove it <laughs> again just for this video. But you can see the tire almost sits right on top of that receiver and uh, it's kind of wide. So I need something to get away from the bumper and I also need something that doesn't have any rise uh, and, and that's important to me for this reason. I'd like to still be able to access the cargo area of the Jeep. Now I had this diabolical ink slipstream. Uh, this is a protective security enclosure which prevents access from anywhere other than by opening the rear uh, tailgate on the Jeep. So that's perfect unless I have a huge tire on a tire carrier and then a bike rack blocking it. So I was trying to find a way that I could get access to this. Remembering I have no access from any other way other than through the back without taking off the bike rack and ideally without taking off the bike. So um, yeah, that was the challenge. So my other bike rack that I had before hitch mounted came up around and then uh, it was one that you hang the bike on. And I was using that for a little while. I was able to get it to work with this big tire carrier. Of course, I didn't like hanging the bike and you know, this uh, bike here has a pretty aggressive top tube. So, you know, I'm trying to fit the rails in here and then the bike hangs all wonky. Um, I could get another bar to hang it like this, but I didn't really want to do that. Um, so yeah, I didn't like that. I scrapped that idea. And so I decided I wanted a platform style carrier that I can set the bike on. Uh, besides the fact that, you know, gets me less scratches on the paint job on the bike. It also is faster for loading and unloading. So I looked at several options and the problem is they all come up and even if I can get them to a point where it'll fit below, like with an extension or a drop hitch, they all have something that blocks this tire and they're designed to tilt out of the way for normal like lift hatches, but not something that rotates out. Uh, so that was a problem. They do make swing out uh, bike racks and other hitch racks and adapters from other companies, but the problem is none of them will fit underneath this tire. Um, they all have some sort of a rise to them where they're connected. So um, I would again have to do a drop and then 
a swing and then a rack and things get way out of control uh, and complicated and more weight and a lot more money. Those things are not cheap, several hundred bucks just for a swing out adapter. Um, so yeah, I was getting frustrated and trying to decide how much I even cared. Uh, but I went to uh, a Facebook group and uh, a mountain biking group and asked like, hey, what do you guys recommend? Here's what I'm trying to do. I need something that comes out flat, um, ideally, so I can open up the tire, you know, take off the bike and at least get access. And there were a lot of recommendations and most of them were not good recommendations for my situation. Of course, if you haven't been in this situation, you don't know that you have to work around it. But one company I heard over and over again was One Up USA. I mean, a lot of people recommended One Up USA. So I looked at it and I had looked at it before, but the problem was still the same. It still comes out, there's a rise, it doesn't work with the tire carrier. And I just, I, I was resolved to the fact that I was probably gonna have to find a way to do a swing out or just get used to the fact that when I have the bike rack on, I can't open the tailgate. But that's when I decided to call them and I'm so thankful I did because what I ended up with was the perfect solution for me, maybe the perfect solution for you, but it's not on their menu, it's not on the website. It's one of those things that uh, you have to call them and ask about and, uh, and they can make it happen. So let me show you what that is. So this is the One Up USA uh, heavy duty bike carrier. This is the single uh, bike design and uh, I can put two bikes on this. I'll show you how that works here. Um, but yeah, one thing that's different about this from what you can find on the website is this has reverse side plates. So normally it's gonna come out of the receiver hitch and then this is gonna point upwards and the actual platform of the bike is gonna be higher so there's this rise. And uh, as we've already discussed, that doesn't work for me. I may be able to clear the tire uh, with this extension uh, and the rise, but I certainly won't be able to open the back. But I talked to them and they're like, yeah, we have this option. They actually made this option for people who wanna put this on a front hitch in the front of the vehicle and lower the bikes down for better you know, field of view. So it turns out this is the perfect solution for me. So check this out. So I can go ahead and slip this in. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you sort of all of the awesomeness of this, how to install it, uh, and any other tidbits you may need to know. But I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. It's got a security bolt there, rock solid. Check it. Amazingly, clears both the tire and the tailgate. So that means I can leave this on and access the rear, take the bike off, no problem. And I was okay with that. I'm like, yeah, it'd be nice to be able to leave the bike on and open this thing up. But again, a fold out um, option is super expensive, super clunky. I'd have to do some crazy, like I think an eight inch drop, which would hang things way down low. I've got everything lifted up nicely at the bumper level. Looks really nice and tight, fits tight, tight to the Jeep. And I just didn't want to do that. But then, I found out I can open the tailgate with the bike installed. Check this out. All right, so the bike is on there, right? Pretty awesome. Clearly, opening the tailgate isn't gonna happen, or is it? Check this out. Can you believe it? Look at that. I don't even have to take the bike off. So yeah, I'm super stoked. Let's get more into the details of this so I can show you what makes it probably, I think most definitely the best bike rack on the market.
All right, so this is a pretty amazing uh, piece of kit. It is aluminum construction made in the USA. One Up uh, USA is the company. Um, it's a very unique design, very heavy duty, robust, yet it's lightweight. It's sturdy and solid, super creative and simple. It's got these ratcheting uh, bars that are gonna hold your bike. By default, this is uh, set at the top, handles the 29 inch tires, which is what I have. But if you have smaller tires you need to handle, it can go all the way down to kid size bikes. Uh, they have a fat tire adapter so you can make it wider uh, for the big fat tire bikes. Just really cool. Also the ability to add on multiple uh, levels of bikes. Um, and I'll show you that later. So I'll show you some tips on loading and unloading the bike here in a second, but I wanna show you some more details on this. Um, first of all, it does use a uh, little ball uh, to secure. And uh, makes it really quick to access and also secure because they use a security uh, hex. But as you can see here, this ball, when you tighten up the bolt here, this ball is gonna press into the inside of the receiver and that's what's gonna lock it into place. Now this being the heavy duty one, it also has a way to slip a uh, security hitch pin, which I'll show you that later. Uh, they have a one and a quarter inch version that does not have this piece. Um, so you have the ball and then there's a little Velcro strap you can use uh, for a security measure. But this ball uh, should hold no problem. We're not pulling trailers with this thing. It literally just has to maintain tension. So, and once you get that tightened down, it's not going anywhere. Right now it's in the ride position. I can drop it down back into that tilt position I showed you earlier. And then it can also go in a store position, which raises it up higher uh, when you don't have the bikes on. Uh, it tucks it up really nice uh, against, in my case, the tire, but if you have a normal vehicle, it's gonna tuck it right up against the bumper of the vehicle. There is this little gold bar here, which has this knob that you can spin out and that's a lock for this latch. So you can actually lock it in uh, whatever position you want. So right now I cannot move that bar, but I spin that, open it up. That bar is free, you know, it's spring loaded, free to remove. And then I can adjust from there. Once I have it in a place that I want to leave it and I want to lock it down, I can spin that, lock it, and now it won't even accidentally I don't know how it could accidentally, but now in order for me to get the clearance I needed, I needed this extension here. Now, I actually got this from 1UP when I ordered the rack, and it made it easy because they just throw it in the box uh, with the delivery. Uh, not only that, it comes with uh, that security hitch pin, which would go right in here and tighten it down with a key. And then now somebody can't remove the one-up rack from this extension. Now in the back of this, one of the unique things about this bumper, I don't have a visible exposed hitch pin for this extension. And so that uh, makes things a little bit challenging because to access it, you have to get way up underneath here on the backside. So I've already done that, I'm not gonna undo it, uh, but I do have a pin holding that. And then I've rigged up this device here is simply an anti-rattle. It makes it solid to the Jeep so that when this locks in and it's solid to the extension, there's no rattle anywhere in the system. And that was 
important to me and pretty easy, but these are things that most of you won't have to do with. As a matter of fact, most of you are gonna have a more traditional uh, hitch system like this, where the pin uh, hole is exposed and you slide the extension. Another really cool thing I like about this is they put these reflective stickers uh, on the back. And also, if you have it up in the lifted position, it has it on the bottom which is a nice touch because this is sticking out just a little bit past the vehicle. So it's nice to have those reflective markers there for uh, drivers behind you to be able to see. So because this is the special version, right, with the reverse side plates, you have to call them and special order them. The other thing is it doesn't quite fit in the box the same way when it's assembled as the standard version. So there is some assembly that you need to do if you order the reverse side plate version so let me step you through this i'll do the uh the setup and install and uh and then after i'm done with that i'll show you some tips on loading and unloading the bike all right so remembering because this is the special version with the reverse side plates it comes disassembled just so that it fits into the shipping box the one with the normal side plates uh, can collapse and fit into the box, which is actually designed to be used uh, again for storage. So hang on to the box and, uh, and use it for storage. All right, so there is this plastic plate. There's a smooth side and a rough side. The rough side is gonna go up. That's gonna give less surface area for these trays to rotate on, and it'll only fit in one way, so just figure out which way the holes align. And then you can see how these trays are gonna fit the little red handles are gonna to point towards the opposite direction from where the hitch is. That'll be the back of the vehicle. There's gonna be one on each side with the holes, but before we do that, we need to insert the bar that is there for the super duty versions and the heavy duty versions. Uh, again, just make sure the holes line up. It'll only go in one way. And then once you get that sorted out, there are gonna be basically a bolt a washer and a lock nut for each side. And so pretty simple, just gonna install uh, those in that order. Bolt goes through the top of the tray, then the washer, then the lock nut. Rinse and repeat on the other side. All right, and there we go. We can start tightening these down. As far as how tight to tighten them, it's basically you want them tight, but still being able to swing. So it's too loose. Um, if there's any play or it swings too easily, just snug it up and make sure it swings. You can see here these little blue uh, tabs there. Those are designed to lock it in the out position, but then you can rotate them like I'm doing here, and then you can fold this up for storage. So that's kind of a, a cool feature. So I'm just trying to figure out what that level of tension is. All right, and this is the extension that uh, I got from 1UP USA. Thankfully, it uses the same exact hex key that you use to attach the uh, rack to the extension. And uh, it's got this really cool anti-rattle pin. Here's how it goes on. Now, this is my son's Jeep, so you can see normally how this would go, is you would uh, screw that in on one side and get it nice and tight. That will remove all of the play, all of the rattle, all of the movement, and lock it into place. And then uh, I can add in the uh, locking side, which will secure it so that a uh, normal random Joe just can't come in and remove that. But as you can see, this makes for a really solid setup. All right, and this is what it looks like on my son's Jeep, just for reference. All right, these are my tips for uh, loading the bike. Um, what I found, now number one, uh, you want this to be parallel with the ratchet bar to slide it. Um, that's basically what I do is just lift it up, let my finger run along the bottom. And then I usually line this up with the end here where the, uh, the end of the ratchet bar goes. And uh, I'll do that on one side and then the other side I'll open up completely. And what that allows me to do is get the bike set into place, get my pedal aligned, whoops, and then come over here and just ratchet that up. 
Now, my bike seems to fit almost centered um, over these reflectors. So what I do is just come over here and then just ratchet them down until they're both locked in. It's not going anywhere. And uh, it actually rides really nicely and it's completely stable. So enough that you can lay the bike basically sideways. So it seems uh, unusual if you're not familiar with this system, but it's worked out really well. Uh, it doesn't touch the bike frame at all. It's only touching the tires, which is also really cool. It's not even touching your rim. So if you have nice rims, uh, you won't mess with those. I mean, it's pretty awesome. Now to take the bike off, what I normally do is just grab one side. You have to put a little bit of tension on it to loosen the ratchet. And then I'll loosen it all the way up, leaving the other one in place. And then from there, just bring it out. The other cool thing about this rack is, is it doesn't matter which way you put the bike. Front tire uh, can go left or right. I know most of the platform carriers have specific positions they want the bike to be in for the front and rear. This one you could throw either way, no problem. My only real concern that I have to watch for is because I'm so close to this tire carrier, uh, I have to make sure my pedal is in a position that it can have some room to go here. And I really like how tight this gets the bike up to the Jeep. As a matter of fact, I'm even overlapping my tire. I don't think you could get it any tighter with any other system, uh, yet still plenty of room for both the bike. And again, to be able to, be able to access the rear cargo area is just, um, phenomenal a phenomenal bonus that i was not expecting give my pedal as much clearance as i can actually that's as much clearance as i can and then boom i'm in here it's so cool thank you one up for telling me that you can get reversed side plates anyway all right so as you can imagine this thing isn't the cheapest on the market but uh, for good reason uh, sometimes you do get what you pay for. Made in the USA, um, aluminum, um, powder-coated platform, and uh, anodized. You can get it either black or silver. Uh, it's a little over 400 bucks for the heavy duty. I think it's cheaper in the $300 range for the normal one. The difference between the heavy duty and the normal one is the two inch receiver on the heavy duty, plus there's another bar for the deck to carry the extra weight underneath another support bar. Uh, you, you saw that during the install. And um, the uh, standard version has a, uh, a one and a quarter inch, but it also has an adapter to go up to a two inch. So if you're, if you're thinking you might use it on a one and a quarter inch, you might use it on a two inch, you might go with the light duty one. Uh, if you're like me and know that you're always gonna run a two inch and you want the, the ability to have the most weight carrying capacity, um, the heavy duty one is the way to go, no question. The uh, side, the reverse side panels is a little bit of an upcharge because that's a custom part. That's not something that they normally stock. Uh, and I think that was like 60 or 70 bucks uh, an add on for that. And then that uh, hitch extension was about 60 or 70 bucks as well. And that includes the anti rattle uh, hitch pin and lock. And then uh, you get the security. Uh, hex keys oh and the add-on you can add on to these i'm going to show you that in a separate video though anyway guys that's it thanks for watching i'll catch you on the next one